Hi, behind me is a picture of a dual channel op amp as used as a building block in electronics very commonly. Now, what if we want to run that off a single supply? Because most op amps are bipolar, which means you need a positive, a negative, and a ground. So we'll preface this video by saying that uh, the first method I tried didn't work so crash hot, uh, but it does to a point. However, the second method is the more tried and true method that's used more commonly. So I left that bit in, even though the video ended up being longer than I anticipated, just because I'm up to experimentation. So sit back and enjoy this video and a look on how to run an op amp on a single supply. <laughs> Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again with a simple one for you. Now, I say that now and it usually ends up turning into a 20 minute saga about me complaining about stuff. There are times when you're going to want to run an operational amplifier on a single ended supply, such as a 9 volt battery. There are many different ways of generating a negative bipolar voltage for the said op amp to operate. Some elegant, some over complex for no reason, but the most elegant and simplest way to do it is a humble tool out of the toolbox the resistive voltage divider now you can add filtration capacitors on it if you wish I don't see the need to do that for this testing experiment but it is what it is. So at this now new ground reference point, say the supply voltage was 9 volt, you are now going to see half the supply voltage here, which is 4.5 volt. So that now means you're going to have a plus 4.5 volt there and a negative 4.5 volt there with reference to this, which is now going to be a virtual earth or 0 volt. Now that's probably by far the simplest solution. Now, this comes with a caveat though. Most op amps such as the TLO72 and the NE5532 have a minimum operation voltage of 6 volt. But the other arrangement was you have your op amp here with your output positive and negative input. This is non inverting. And the resistive divider was simply put on the input pin. Let's breadboard it up and then actually connect it to an op amp because I do actually have an NE5532 knocking about that we can do some tests on. Let's go. Uh, it's as simple as that and the choice of resistance here is not really that critical. I'm using 100k, you can use 22, 10. It doesn't really matter as long as it's above 10k we'll say it doesn't need to be as high as a mega ohm it can be if you so wish now i've got this 9 volt battery here which i'm going to hook up i've got the meter measuring the halfway point and if i connect the battery we can see we've got four and a half volts there so that's all well and good let's actually now try powering an op amp with it well this is really odd because i can't figure out for the life of me why this is passing a signal when there's no power connected. There is absolutely no power. I've got the battery disconnected totally and it's still passing the signal. There's nothing shorted. And the fact that I don't actually see a change in the signal when I connect the battery like amplified is um, curious because I've actually changed the IC over to another one and it's still doing the same thing. So something that I wanted to do simple turns into an ongoing saga simply because I can't figure out why it's doing something that it's doing. I can get a maximum output though of 4.45 volt before Eclipse which is close to the supply rail but the fact that it's um, 
working when you disconnect the power is odd. Although I am getting an amplified signal, it's 4.2 volt there with the battery connected and 3.7 when the uh, battery is not connected. Now if you take the op amp out of circuit, well you lose the signal. Okay, I've actually connected two 100 nanofarad capacitors on the inputs and output respectively to just just try and isolate what's going on here. Now the signal has changed into a very distorted signal which looks like crossover distortion which would make sense because there's no power. So as soon as I power this, if I can get the lead to agree with me, whoa. Well that was unexpected. That's totally messed up now. I actually reckon in this uh, instance the voltage is too low. It's uh, only seeing four and a half volt either side. Okay, I've rebuilt it now. Um, obviously it's not going to work on a nine volt battery because the minimum voltage the NE5532 can uh, accept is roughly plus minus five volt. So I've got it hooked up to the uh, power supply that powers the computer which is about nine and a, 19 and a half volt. So I will just connect up the power. It's running off of a switch mode power supply and yeah it's terrible. The uh, waveform won't even stay stable. Well as they say, not to get discouraged. So I'm going to go for a linear supply option here. Uh, just a 20 volt one. Got one of my really safe transformers sitting over here in the background connected across the 15 volt winding into a full bridge rectifier with a smoothing capacitor. I'm going to stop doing that now because that's electro booms shtick, not mine. Hopefully everything's wired correctly and that I've got good contact on my power plug. Plug it in and see if it works. And it does and I've got 20 volt DC there. Okay, got my mini linear power supply hooked up to the op amp across the voltage divider with the ground point now being the virtual point in between. Well, it's not really virtual, it is actually a center point. I do have a DC offset of nearly minus two volt. Okay. Okay, so I've got my test equipment hooked up again and as we can see, without the power turned on, we're actually getting an output signal again. I'm not sure exactly why, that is still a complete mystery to me, so I'll plug it in and see what happens. Well, we do actually have a signal. Isn't that special? And not that it makes any difference, I forgot to tie my input pin to ground via a resistor. That is now tied to ground via a resistor. Not much difference to the output on the scope. Alright, what I might do is I might swap that any... 5532 IC out for a TLO72. Now interestingly with the TLO72 in the any 5532's place I have nothing on the scope. Isn't that interesting? Okay I'll plug this one in now make sure nothing is shorting because I have moved stuff around. Make sure that that resistor doesn't come into contact. Everything looks hunky-dory at the moment. Okay, plug it in, and we have no output, strange. So let me dick around with this. Well, for some reason, I cannot seem to get that TL072IC to even function in the circuit. Could be the voltage is too low, it's possible. But the NE5532 does operate fine. I just want to know what my positive going voltage is. Ah, now I can see what the problem is. With the meter set to the virtual earth point between the resistive divider, we can see we're getting roughly 5 volt DC and for some reason climbing. That's probably why the TL072 doesn't function. So if I now move this to my negative point, which is over here. That's interesting, I've got negative 14 volt. There seems to be an imbalance. And I am measuring correctly as far as I know. Yes, the meter is connected to the ground point. Well, as they say, trial and error, and in my case, mostly error. I didn't really think about this properly through before I 
attempted to do this and I've wasted probably about an hour of time now. Um, you won't have seen an hour of shit, but the potential divider to produce the ground reference point in between the two resistors isn't going to cut it here. So the second method I mentioned at the start was to actually put the resistive divider on the input pin. There is supposed to be a line here saying input, but for all intents and purposes it doesn't matter. We're now DC biasing pin 3 of the IC, which is the positive input, and there will be DC present on the output, pretty much close to the supply rails, and that's what we'd expect when we uh, configure an op-amp like this with a potential divider and we're using the negative rail of the power supply and the positive rail of the power supply respectively on pins 8 and 4. So between this point and this point we will now have a DC voltage close to 20 volts on the output and with no input signal connected indeed we do. Now this is what we expect as I said and this is good because we can now DC bias the next op-amp stage if we so wish. So I'll just reconnect my input signal Like so, and as we can see on the scope, we've almost got like twice, maybe three times more the output signal than we did before. We're currently, before clipping, experiencing 10.9 volt, which is half the supply. Isn't that special? And the other thing that's also interesting is now if we disconnect the supply, input starts to fall off and now we've got bugger all output signal which is what it's supposed to do a little bit of transient there as the capacitor discharge but we've got now zero output signal uh, instead of the bleed through that we were having before now I've swapped out to the TLO 72 again and I'm pretty much more confident now that this is actually going to produce an output signal where it wasn't before. Indeed we do. Look at that. And we've got the same 10.8 odd volt out. Probably a little bit less. So about 10.5 volt, but still half the supply voltage. And we've got 13.95 uh, volt DC present on the output with an input signal which makes sense because it's now superimposing the AC signal on top of the DC signal. So as soon as I disconnect our input, it goes back up to the full supply voltage of 20 volt. With the TLO72 installed, will it now work on a 9 volt battery? Well, there's only one way to find out. Now I highly doubt it considering this battery is almost depleted. Plus the minimum operation voltage is 6 volt, but I've got 9 volt going across the whole entire lot. Or close to it. Well, I've got 8.1 volt DC and half of that is 4 point, well, almost 4.05. And no, there is no output signal. I'll just give the battery an extra oomph by adding a 1.9, 1 1.5 cell in between. Uh, we've got a bad signal output and we've got 9.6 now DC on the multimeter but it's not really producing an output no output swing I think the minimum to run the TLO 702 and the any double five three two is 12 volt so plus minus six that's pretty much well lines up with the data sheet it was worth a try god that fart stunk here is a cleaner drawn schematic of how we bias the op amp correctly to work on single supply. Here's our voltage divider here. We've got an input capacitor on pin 3. So there's going to be DC present on this input. So we don't want it uh, affecting whatever's connected to it. So you don't want DC passing out. Because we'll be at half the supply voltage here at pin 3. So if it's on a minimum of 12 volt for the any double five three two TLO seven two respectively, you're going to see six volts here between here and ground. And at the output, we're going to see the full supply voltage of plus oh, well twelve volts if there is no um, input signal present. So that's how it's uh, done. And the way I did it before doesn't seem to want to work properly for various different reasons. 
like uh, making the virtual earth point in the center there don't know why it has done before the voltage may just be simply too too low however if you wanted to run this on a 9 volt battery it won't work good luck you may find a TL072 that will work on a lower supply voltage but it's really hit and miss um, you can buy other op amps that will run on lower supply voltage and the OPA2171-EP is a wider supply range of 2.7 volt to 36 volt DC you've got a lower offset voltage for a start of 1.8 millivolt which doesn't really matter in this configuration and lower power consumption of 0.475 MA high output current of 25 milliamps so keep that in mind if you want to run on a 9 volt battery the OPA2171 EP but it may be quite expensive we're talking like probably the six seven dollar range here for one single IC but it's a dual op amp replacement drop-in for the TLO72 and E5532 anyway this is the Astro 30 if you enjoyed this video please remember to rate comment and subscribe below you can always follow me on Facebook and become a Patreon supporter for as little as a dollar a month links are in the description as usual anyway Hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.